Floss Tube. Welcome back to Bumble Stitches Floss Tube. My name's Nicola and today is Sunday the 14th of February. It's Valentine's Day so happy Valentine's Day to you if you celebrate. Um, we haven't gone mad this year we just gave each other cards but that's the most important bit I feel to get a nice card from someone you love. Um, yes and I'm wearing my love notes. The most valentine -y thing I could think of. Um, this sweater that I'm wearing is one that I knitted about a year and year and a bit ago. This is the Love Note sweater by Tin Can Knits. So I'll just show you a little bit closer because these are supposed to sort of form the shape of hearts. And plus it's nice and cosy um, because it's still really cold. You can see there's lots of snow behind me. It is on the way out now um, but I would have popped a little bit of footage in the opening of this video just showing you it did get really quite um quite bad for us we don't normally get very bad snow where we are but yeah it was pretty it was pretty snowy the last week so I'm glad that it's starting to clear now and it makes getting around a little bit easier so I hope you're all doing well um it's been two weeks since my last floss tube but I did have a video out last week which was my organization video so thank you to all those that watched it and commented on that um, and thank you to everyone that commented on my last floss tube video of course which was the 5,000 subscriber giveaway um, celebration video and there were so many of you that commented and, and thanked you know uh, congratulated me so thank you all for that that was amazing and the subscriber numbers um, continue to count so it's just incredible so won't be very long before we hit 6,000 which is just mind-blowing so thank you all again for that um okay I'm just going to I have got notes because my head is all over the place I'm just a, such a scatterbrain at the moment um yes there were lots of comments um about ironing floss lots of you it seems are off to iron your kinky floss um a couple of tips about using a moist sponge to run down the length of your floss if it's a bit kinky or even holding it over the kettle um, and the steam getting the creases out. I would be a bit careful with that one just in case you burn your fingers. And also um, straightening irons for your hair. People have, have recommended that you can use those as well. So that's all good to know. It seems I'm not alone in struggling with the part of a cross stitch chart where it goes on to the next page and they give you the greyed out area. Lots of people said they had the same problem, so thank you for making me not feel like I was the only person that couldn't um, couldn't quite cope with that. That's made me feel much better. Um, yes, so I think I'm going to get straight on and do the giveaway for the 5,000 subscribers. Um, the bag, which is this one, that I made as the prize. There were lots and lots, um, sorry, I'm a bit fidgety. <laughs> there were lots and lots of comments. I popped them all into the random um, comment picker from the word celebration. I also made it include celebrate um, just to make sure so that everyone had um, a chance of winning. And without further ado, the winner of the bag is Bonnie Rogers. So I'll pop the little thing up here so you can see, but congratulations, Bonnie. I'm so thrilled that you've won the bag and thank you to everybody that commented. I wish I could give you all a bag. I really do, but a special um, congratulations go to Bonnie. So I have set up an email account for this floss tube, which is bumblestitchesflosstube at gmail.com. I'll pop it along the bottom of the screen here. And Bonnie, if you can contact me and let me know your mailing address, I can get your lovely bag sent out to you. And I really hope you enjoy using it. Um, and if anybody else has got any uh, anything they need to contact me about regarding anything you see on any of my floss tube videos, then please do drop me a line at that email address. It's difficult for me to pick up messages anywhere else. Um, Instagram doesn't show messages unless 
you um, unless I was following you then it would come up as a message if not it doesn't show them unless you delve a bit deeper and actually go in and look for other messages so if you do need to contact me about something please do drop me a line on my new floss tube at gmail.com email address and I'd be very happy to hear from you right I'm going to put Bonnie's bag safely until that goes on its way and I have no idea where you are in the world Bonnie but as I said I'm happy to send it um, anywhere okay stitching it's been a little bit um, erratic around here the last couple of weeks since I saw you I have um, started doing some decorating work in the house we decided that uh, we would like to get a few jobs done while I'm still off work. Now, if you watched my organisation video, you would have heard or seen, um, I had a little news flash that I've got an IKEA delivery. It's actually coming tomorrow with some new furniture for the craft room. I'm gonna try and really get that organised with a sewing space and an office space and really sort of get it super organised. So that's all coming tomorrow. But I didn't plan very well because in the meantime, I decided to make a start on our dining room. Our dining room was the room I liked the least in this house when we bought it. I didn't like the wallpaper, I didn't like the carpet was hideous, I didn't like any of it. So the time has come. So I'm gonna pop a really small little clip of a video showing you the current state of affairs. So as you can see, I've been quite busy. I stripped all the wallpaper. We've done some filling on the walls. Justin helped me with that. I am the designated DIYer in the house. Um, so it's my job and I ripped up all the carpet and the underlay um, because we're having some laminate floor delivered, which yours truly is gonna attempt to fit herself. So wish me luck with that. Um, but when I ripped up the carpet and the underlay, the state of the floor underneath was not good. Um, yes, I've had to do quite a lot of repairs to the floor so that it's sound for when I do that. So the reason I'm telling you all this is kind of a life update, but also, um, yeah, it's kind of hindered my stitching time a little bit. And I was so tired after doing some of the prep work that I didn't even feel like stitching a couple of evenings, which is unheard of for me. My hands are a mess and it's all just, yeah, but it will be worth it in the end. So I'll, I'll, share, um, I'll share it with you once it's all done. In other very brief news, I have been invited to go for my COVID vaccination, um, not this week, the week after. So that is a relief. I'm really glad to be going to get that done and, and feel very um, lucky to be called up for it. Uh, Justin hasn't been called up for his yet, he's a little bit younger than me. Um, but then yes, it will be it will be such a relief to finally get that vaccination done. So that's kind of where we are at the moment here. I have got um, quite a few questions that were asked in the last floss tube and also in the organisation video. So I will quickly whip through those. Um, and as I said, um, it does work better for me if I answer your questions on the next video um, but if you've got anything that you wanted to ask me um, you know directly then do feel free to email me but I am rambling now aren't I so I'm going to get on with the questions I'll need to read them out because otherwise I will forget and I have made notes so I'm a little bit organized in that respect um, okay so both Molly and Pam asked me about the fabric that I'm using for my anniversaries of the heart and I'm using a 30 count legacy linen. The color is pecan shortbread and I'm stitching it all as one piece. So I'm not doing the individual charts, I'm doing it all as one piece. Um, Laurie asked me, what was the difference between Murano and Lugana um, even weave fabric? She's looking to move up from Ada or change from stitching on Ada and wants to try even weave and she wondered what the differences were. Now, I, if you know, please comment below. I did do a little bit of um, looking on the internet and I went onto Zweigart's website. So I thought it's actually a really good question. And 
I thought initially it was just that um, Murano was a 32 count and that Lugano was 25 and 28 count even weave, but it turns out there's also a um, 32 count Lugano as well. So who knows? I don't actually know, Laurie, is the answer. But if you're moving up from Ada to an even weave, I'm guessing that Lugano would be a better place to start. Um, but they're all really good even weaves, so. But yeah, if anyone knows the answer and what actually is the difference, then please let us know in the comments down below. Um, Jacqueline asked me uh, about the Hello Spring or the Celebrate Spring chart I showed last floss tube from Madame Chantilly and she said, how long did it take to arrive? Um, really quickly, I bought it as a PDF from her Etsy shop and downloaded it. Well, Actually, no, that's fibs. I didn't download it straight away. I bought it on her Etsy shop and then she contacted me and sent me an email with the PDF attached. So not very long at all. I think she only works um, business hours on her Etsy shop, sort of Monday through Friday. But yeah, you'll get it much quicker than if you order it from, um, you know, for, as, a, as a hard copy from an online site. Um, the next question was from F and B Fab, and they asked, "Was the white the? I hate that air uh, things, but the white in my uh, snow garden anniversaries of the heart was it actually white, or was it ecru? And it's actually um, a DMC ecru that I popped into that chart there." Um, Sean asked me about Hazel Anderson, who I brought bought linen from on Instagram, um, could I link her shop? So I'll just put a link in the notes down below. Hazel only sells on Instagram at the moment. Um, she will, if you follow her there, she will announce when she's doing the next sale of her linens. They are beautiful, but you need to go like the wind on that, type in um, your comment in to get some. So be warned, it's very, very popular and yeah you have to be super super quick to get some but good luck and i hope you can get some because her linen is beautiful a um, couple of questions from the organization video i hope i'm not boring you all to tears going through these um the best comment of the whole thing had to be from a youtube account called mr giraffe um who said that the video was giraffe approved which really made me laugh so mr giraffe if you're out there i hope this meets with your giraffe expectations today as well. Um, Catherine M um, was admiring the Mary Poppins uh, chart that I showed, my sort of whip that I had um, showed in that video. That's from Lily Violet. She has an Etsy shop and I will put a link down below for you. Um, Pokey Little Pineapple, Caroline, she asked, um, did I have a stitchy spot, like a special stitching chair in my craft room? Now, um, the answer is no, I don't. I like to sit with Justin, so I like to sit in the lounge and stitch while he games. Um, and in the summertime, I pop into here and, and sit and stitch, although sometimes it's actually too bright in here to stitch, if that makes sense. It sounds a bit crazy, but sometimes it's a bit too bright to stitch. So yeah, the answer is no, I don't plan to, I do sew on the machine in there, but not um, cross stitching, I like to sit. With Justin, I sit on the sofa in a stitchy spot there and, and he sits and does his gaming. So yeah, that's the answer to that one for you, Caroline. Thank you. And Don Patterson, um, I can't read the other name. I can't read my, oh, sorry. Don Patterson Lauren Morrison asked what were sew tights. I mentioned, I found one when I was organizing and showed it and, and she asked or, or they asked what it was. So just very, very briefly, that is a sew tight, this little magnet thing here. I'll take it apart. That's the back and that's the front. And basically it's a really super strong magnet that comes in two parts. So the front and the back. And I use them for English paper piecing. So if you've got your two hexagons, that one's a bit of loose thread there, you can pop them together and use your sew tights so just line it up open up your sew tights and put one piece on the back one piece on the front and they are super strong magnets so you can then hand sew along the edge of your English paper piecing and 
they don't get in the way. So I did start out using Wonder Clips, but of course you always end up with your thread caught around them. Um, it just makes it really easy. Not, not necessary, but like a lot of things, nice to have. So those are the sew tights. So thank you all for your questions. Thank you for taking the time to um, post those as, as comments and questions on the videos. It is much appreciated. Right, let's move on to some whips. As I mentioned, stitchy time has been a bit um, unpredictable lately, but I have managed to get some stitching done, which is good, because I think I would go insane if I couldn't sit down and do something. So let's have a little look at Anniversaries of the Heart, and that's living in one of my little project bags. And I'm stitching the second part, which is Valentine Rose. And I know lots and lots of people are stitching along, which is great fun. Um, Rachel and Sue of Floss Toss are stitching along with me as well. I'll pop the hashtag down below in case you're stitching along with us all. But so many people stitching this series again this year, which is brilliant. It's lovely to see all your progress. And I am almost done with block two. Excuse that I haven't ironed my linen this time. But yeah, I'm almost done with block two. That house is a beast. It really is. I love it, but there's quite a lot of stitching there. It makes the block, not quite, but almost. It's probably 50% coverage of the, whole, of the whole of the block, I would guess. So a little bit more to do. I've got to do the, um, the pointing in my brickwork and the door. There's a vase of an urn of flowers here and the personalisation. This one's going to be for my... For my nanny Alice, her birthday is February 22nd, so if I can get that done by her birthday that would be lovely and then I can start working on the bonus block which slots in before you get to March um, block. So I am, as I mentioned earlier, I am stitching this all as one piece. I've got this huge piece, you can see it's a half, <laughs> absolutely huge. It's a bit unwieldy at the moment, but until I've got a bit further along, I don't want to trim it down. So, but I'm really pleased with how Anniversaries of the Heart is progressing. I'm using a mixture of, I'll just fold this up because it is humongous. Pop that there. I'm using a combination of the cool, I'm using all the called for colors for Valentine Rose, but a couple I couldn't get, so I've put in the DMC equivalents. So really pretty colors there. And not long to go on that one. I've got the colors ready for the bonus block, and I need to check if I need anything else for the March block. But I'm just, I want to stitch on it all the time, but I don't want to neglect all my whips. It's a, it's a thing, isn't it? It's a bit of a dilemma. You want to stitch on one thing and you fall in love with it, but you don't want to just neglect all your other little whip babies. So yeah, need more time, I think is the key. My other whip I've been working on is um, in this little bag and it's the Sew by Row, which is a Laurie Holt design. It's this one here. So Sew by Row. Fat Quarter Shop um, Floss Tube are actually doing a stitch along of this at the moment and I think I should probably be down here or even down here but I'm um, somewhere up here. I am a bit behind but I'm not going to worry about it. It will be done when it's done and eventually this will be in my sewing room when I get it all finally organised. So not a lot of progress, just started on the blue sewing machine here. Again, these are actually quite a lot of, uh, they're quite stitch heavy, these sewing machine pieces. But it is coming along nicely. I like to stitch on this one when I want something a bit more relaxing. This is on the 25 count Lugana, even weave. I'm using all the called for DMC. Um, and I don't need to use my magnifier for stitching on this one. So this is sort of my relaxing stitch. Well, I do need to use my magnifier for Anniversaries of the Heart and some of my other new starts that I'll share with you in a moment. So I'll just pop these away and I'll show you some new starts that I have um, started stitching. I have two new starts since I last spoke to you on Floss Tube. 
one of which is living in my lovely new Gems stitchery bag that Gem kindly sent to me that I shared on the last video. And this is token for my friend. It's a pattern by Beth Twist of Heartstring Samplery. Absolutely love this piece. And I've got a small start, but this is actually really exciting for me because I'm stitching this on 36 count linen and it's the first project that I have um, undertaken on 36 count linen and so far so good I am loving it again apologies I haven't ironed I really I'm regretting that now because it looks a bit of a a bit of a mess but I've made a start I've got the, the first part of the text in I started the chart in the middle I don't normally do that because I didn't have a huge um, piece of fabric I thought it was prudent to start in the middle so I didn't run out and I've done the the rows and this is 36 count I'll just check in my book it's a 36 count weeks confederate grey fabric I'm using all the cord for threads I'll show you those in a moment and this is stitched with one strand over two again first time I've done that and I really really am enjoying it I love the way my stitches look I don't know if the camera will pick them up but I find it really gives a super neat finish and I love it. I do need to use my magnifying lamp so it's um, not something that I could just pick up and put down. I do need to sort of settle down to some stitching time with it. But I'm loving it. So I'll show you my threads. They are all the called for. They're mostly weeks, I think. There's a couple of um, there's a couple of gentle arts in there that you can see. I've got all my my threads don't do that tidy thing that other people's do. My threads just end up in a bit of a bit of a mess, but they do look lovely against this linen. So I'm hoping to get some more stitches put onto that because I'm stitching that for a, a lovely friend, and I can't wait to get it all done and made up and give that to her. So that was exciting, and I would, you know, lots of times you. You um, read on Instagram or on floss tube comments and things of stitches that have come back to stitching or they're just starting out and they want to try, um, like Laurie said in her comment, they want to move up from Ada to even weave or they want to explore different fabric counts. And I would say be encouraged, don't give up because when I picked up cross stitching again after a very, very long hiatus, um, I was stitching on a 14 count Ada and had no hopes of going any higher than that or changing because I didn't think I would be able to see or do it. But with good lighting, good magnification and practice, obviously getting back into practice, you know, I'm, I didn't think I'd even be stitching on 32 count, let alone 36. So, you know, keep on at it and you, you might be surprised at what you can achieve. There's, of course, nothing wrong with stitching on Ada or... Um, you know 14 count or 28 count even with I've got lots of projects like that which I love but if you do want to um, try some of the higher counts then yeah I would definitely encourage you to keep keep at it so that's my first um, new start the other one that I've got is in one of these little bags that I showed in my organization video last week and this is Brenda Gervais Harrietta and Co and this is going to be for my Easter decor which hopefully will be in my new dining room when it's all done um, not that I'm setting myself up for lots of work but you know um, I'm stitching this along with my friend Leslie from Duckpool Lane Leslie's on Instagram she does some beautiful stitching she also makes project bags and does all sorts of wonderful um, needle crafts but yes, we're stitching this along and if anybody wants to join us, just please feel free, share your progress. You can tag me and tag Leslie, I'm sure she won't mind. And I've made a small start. Again, I have taken the plunge and done this on a 36 count linen. And I don't have a lot. I've been juggling, juggling projects. Um, so that's my small start on Harrietta and Co. The linen is a 36 count seraphim um, the colourway is Tobias. It's got quite a lot of um, sort of mottling, which I really like. 
and I've just got the little bit of the braces of a pinafore, a little bit of the body and a tiny start on the head. There's a lot of stitching in this piece. You can see from the chart, it's quite intensive. I'm using again, all the cord for, and it seems a bit extravagant for such a small project to be using all the cord for because there are a lot of colors in this project and they're all um, over dyed. So there's classic color works, weeks and gentle arts, I think in this project. My thinking is because I don't have a huge stash of over dyed flosses that if I, you know, while I can, I'm gonna kit up with the cord for and then it will help me to build up a little bit more of a stash and then I won't have to keep get, getting those um, going forward. I can just dip into what I've got. So that is my small start on Harrietta and Co. But again, I'm really, really enjoying it. And I just need to, um, yeah, just need to find more time to crack on with all these projects. I've got a few new plans as well, things that I'd like to, or that I'm going to get started on. So we'll have a little look at those now. And the first of which is, excuse me while I just get organised, is Prim and Proper. And this again is a beautiful Lori Holt design published by It's So Emma. This pattern was gifted to me by Fat Quarter Shop and it's the same as the quilt that's also available. This is starting as a sew along. I think it's to get the first section done, which is this top section by the 3rd of March. I probably won't keep up with the sew along, but it's fine with me. And it uses the same threads as the Prim Stitch series. So the Prim Orifloss, but there is also a DMC conversion on the chart. So you don't have to invest in the Orifloss if you don't want to. Um, I need to sort out some fabric for this. I hope. I think I've got some in my stash that I can use. It won't be the called for, which is the 25 count Lugana, but that's fine. I'm, I think I've got some 32 count um, that will be perfect for this. So I'm going to be making a start on this and I will share that with you next time so you can see how I'm getting on. I'm making such a mess here, which is no change. Now, I'm not sure if I shared this with you. I know I shared the pattern with you last time. This one here, which is the Crochetta Go Go, I did definitely share the pattern with you. I'm going to be starting these because, again, these are for my Easter decor. But I don't know if I shared the flosses with you. So I've got some lovely flosses and I'll show you the fabric. This is part of the fabric that I got from the um, Amazon haul that I showed you last time as well. And the fabric is, she says, trying to find it, a 32 count Flober Raw. I've got a fat quarter here and I have got all the DMC threads. So there's quite a lot of lovely, bright, springy colours. So again, I'm looking forward to making a start on that one. Super, super pretty. Might not be done for this Easter, but that's not a problem, is it? It's always next Easter. And the final um, new start that I'm really, I'm so excited about this, I can't, it's like amazing. You all know I'm a really big Lori Holt. I'm a really big Lori Holt fan. And I'm also a really big fan of Darling Christie at Crosshatch Quilts. Um, so to see those two ladies together on Lori Holt's floss tube that came out this Friday, just gone, I was beside myself. I just couldn't, couldn't even cope with it. I wanted to watch straight away, but I had other things to do. And I thought, no, I'm saving this until I'm sat down with a cup of tea, all cozy in the evening, having PJs on, the fire on, cup of tea, and sat and watched those two lovely ladies. And it made my week. It was such a treat. So if you haven't watched it, I'm sure you have. If you haven't watched it, go over and watch that floss tube video because it is perfection. So the reason I'm telling you this is because Laurie and Christy are doing a sew along. I'm just rummaging in my bits here. Um, they're doing a sew along of the Heartstring Samplery pattern. It's not a new one, I think it was out a couple of years ago, Cross Stitch Nation. So there you go, there's the chart. It was sold out, I normally buy most of my um, charts and my threads from Peakside Needleworks. It was completely sold out, obviously once it was announced that they were doing it, everybody jumped on board and bought it. 
So I went on to um, Etsy, onto Beth Twist's Etsy shop and downloaded a copy of the pattern there and printed it out on my printer. And to make it a bit more snazzy, I printed the chart section um, just on paper. That's not the chart, that's just some, some information. Um, I printed it on a piece of cardstock so I felt super snazzy. I've got my fabric and I've got my threads. So the fabric that I've got is a 32 count Dusty Road by Seraphim. So let me just put it on my little design board thing so you can see. It's a really nice, that's more of a true colour. Yeah, so 32 count. And I think the pattern does call for 32 count. And I've got all the called for threads apart from a couple that were out of stock which I've made DMC um, replacements with. I'm just laying them out on here so you can see how pretty they are. Here we go. Okay. So those are the threads. Really lovely threads. This stitch along starts on Tuesday coming, which is the 16th of February, which is Laurie's birthday. So happy birthday for Tuesday, Laurie, if you're watching. Um, yeah, and I just can't wait to get started. I'm going to get my fabric, um, just run a zigzag around the edge. I've got all the threads. I'm going to get them, um, the DMC ones, ready onto thread drops and get stitching away on that. So it's the invitation is open to everybody. If you've got the chart, as I said, if you can't get it, download it. Um, yeah, just get stitching with us because it's going to be such, such fun and I can't wait. Again, this is one that's going to have pride of place in my sewing room once it's done and I think I might even splash out and get that one framed. So that is my exciting start for Tuesday. And I'm going to try and take a leaf out of Laurie's book. I mean, let's face it, I basically want to be Laurie, don't I? So I think I might make... Um, I might choose something special to start on my birthday, which is coming up soon. So I think, um, yeah, I'll have a little look through and see what I might like to start then. Because it's such a nice idea and then you've always got that in your head. Because I think anything that you hand make, be it knitting or sewing or stitching, you kind of keep those memories of what you were doing when you, um, when you make something, don't you? I mean, most of my February... Um, block the end or well, definitely all of my January block of anniversaries of the heart is the handmaid's tale to me it was just me watching that and stitching on it and it's in things you just you know what I mean you just work your your memories into your work don't you and I think it's nice if you can think oh well I started that on my birthday and carry it forward okay I'll stop rambling on about that and let's move on to some giveaways which is super exciting now I don't want you to be over excited though because I don't think I'll have giveaways every episode um, but every now and again hopefully which will be perfect last episode I showed you some goodies that were sent to me very kindly and generously by a fat quarter shop and I've got some goodies from that little um, haul that I'd like to share with you all. So I've got three separate giveaways for you and I'm going to try and get them in order so I can tell you what you need to do. To enter the giveaway you need to please subscribe and like my video, that would be amazing. Uh, you need to be over 18 so that I can ask you for your address so that I can send the prize to you. And please don't mention the word giveaway in your comments. I'll give you some keywords that you need to um, put in your comments to be entered. You can enter for all three, but you will only win one, if that makes sense. So let me show you what we've got. We have got the first one, most appropriately, is the gorgeous Just My Type pattern and the pink magnetic needle case. So I thought that is absolutely perfect for today. Hopefully that'd be my screenshot for today. That'd be ideal, wouldn't it? Um, so if you want to win this little duo, you need to quote the word love in your comment, please. The next one is a pattern from the Prim Stitch Series by Laurie Holt and the teal 
magnetic needle case which says stay sharp and if you'd like to win this duo please quote the word home and the final one is the gorgeous I really wanted to keep these the gorgeous stitch cards from Laurie Holt the Christmas um, the new Christmas edition and the aqua magnetic needle case and if you'd like to win this duo please quote the word Christmas so three chances to win as I said you could enter for all three you will only win one and I'm happy to post wherever you are in the world so um, yeah I look forward to seeing your comments and pop those keywords in and I will announce the winners on my next full floss tube episode something a little bit different now I was chatting on line with the lovely Liz from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch and we were talking about um, project bags both a little bit obsessed with them I think and we were saying how lovely the project bag was that Christy from Crosshatch Quilts had made for Laurie Holt and it was one with tomatoes on so we were admiring that and saying how lovely it was and Liz has just put out a tutorial of how to make the flat I haven't got one can you believe I haven't got one to hand because they're all over on the sofa over there the the flat project bags that's the style that I've been showing you this morning she's just put out a brilliant tutorial on her channel um, of how to make those bags and I said to her would it be okay to link her tutorial in my video which I haven't put up yet I will put it up in the next few days or possibly next weekend I've done a video of how to make the patchwork panel for the front of the bags like the giveaway bag that I've done today I hope you're keeping up does this all make sense so yes we were chatting and I said I would really like to link her tutorial because the two videos combined you could make the patchwork panel from my um, little tutorial and then put it together into bag using Lizzie's tutorial and we thought that would be really cool we also decided that we needed to have a bag as lovely as the one that Christy made for Laurie. So I suggested that we did a little bag along. So I'm going to make a bag and Liz is going to make a bag using um, the Laurie Holt books, Farm Girl Vintage. This is Farm Girl Vintage 1. I think Liz might be doing one from, I think hers might be from this. I was originally going to do the one with the beehive on. But I've had a change of heart so I think I'm going to go for the strawberry and I've diligently covered up all the pattern information so you can see so that's the patchwork scrappy strawberry block from Farm Girl Vintage so I'm going to make that and then make it into a project bag and I think Liz is going to go for the cherries um, so that's our plan and then we thought wouldn't it be cool to invite anybody else that's watching that wanted to join in and make bags with us to join in and have fun so you don't obviously have to use um, the Laurie Holt patterns you can do anything you want you can do it plain you can use my patchwork tutorial that as I said I'm going to put up soon you can do whatever you like but we just thought it'd be fun to um, have a little bit of a project bag along so if you want to share your progress or your finished bags I know lots of people have already been doing this on Lizzie's Instagram but I'll link I'll put Lizzie's Instagram at the bottom of the screen here and mine and you can tag us because we'd really love to see what you get up to and what you make and goodness knows when I'm gonna have time to make mine but I will I will make the time because I'm really excited to make a cute strawberry bag so that's just a little bit of fun that I thought I'd share with you all I'll also share with you all some haul that I have um, had in the last couple of weeks and the first things are some bits and pieces that I got online from Hobbycraft and there's some bits that I thought would be nice to decorate um, it's back to the dining room again the dining room for Easter so I really have got a deadline haven't I um, to make a tiered tray and put some pretty things in it and just make it look really nice and springy so I went on their website they had some nice things that were in stock and the delivery I hit the free delivery so that was fine I'll show you what I got first thing is this really cute little wooden rabbit thing just a flat wooden piece it's not huge but I think one of those crochetta go go pieces might fit on there so that was super sweet the little bunny and I'll probably take this off and put something a bit more 
a bit more flamboyant on my bunny, I think. So that was the first thing I got. I also picked up this gorgeous little bird's nest with the pretty flowers. And I love the pastel colours of the eggs. I thought that'd be nice in the three-tiered tray. Um, I'm channeling my inner Priscilla here, you can tell, can't you? I picked up a couple of trims, this crochet lace one and a pink gingham trim. Again, I thought they'd be really pretty for those finishes. And then I bought this garland, so I thought it'd be nice to use for in the three-tiered tray or taking pieces off to use on finishes, but it's actually quite a bit bigger than I thought. So it goes on and on and on. So yeah, oh, well, it's two pieces, so there you go. So that's, um, and this wasn't expensive. I think it was about 10 pounds for all of it. And it goes on forever. So yeah, that will look pretty as, um, as a bit of spring greenery in the dining room. Um, I had a little delivery from Peakside Needleworks, as I mentioned in my favourite online um, needlework shop. I finally got the last of the anniversaries of the heart. So I've got the complete set now, so that's a relief because I was worrying in case I couldn't get them all. This is number eight, Clara Ellen. The house in there, not nearly as big as the one in um, the block I'm doing at the moment, so that's good. And I picked up another heartstring sampler. I'm sort of making it my mission to get lots of Beth's patterns. This is Baby It's Cold Outside. Love this one. It did go out of stock just before Christmas, so I thought I'd grab it now. No intentions of starting it anytime soon, but I wanted to make sure I had it. Um, one that Laurie Holt showed when she was showing all her um, tomato patterns in the tomato bag that Christy made her. So Queen of the Needle by Brenda Gervais. Love that. Another one for the sewing room. It was funny because we were watching, obviously Laurie was going through all her tomato patterns. Um, and obviously it's the, you, we say tomato, you say tomato, isn't it? And Justin was saying, what is this obsession with tomatoes? Why is everyone talking about tomatoes? And I was trying to explain to him about the tomato pin cushions and um, you know, that's why they were popular, especially in sewing related patterns. But yeah, it did make us giggle with all the, all the tomato related um, products. And finally, I picked up these from Lady Dot Creates and they're a couple of pieces of velveteen. They're 100% cotton velveteen. I bought them for using for the back of pillows, um, probably for the back of Henrietta and Co. And this green might be for my Merry and Minty um, that I did at Christmas time, which still isn't finished. So I might use that for that. But yeah, they're, this one's bluebells and this one's string bean and they both measure um, 18 by 10 inches so they're a fat eighth um, so it'd be perfect for those little finishing those little pillows there were a few threads but I've already distributed them among um, kits so they don't count do they because they're in kits so that is everything that I wanted to share with you today I have no idea how long this video is it's probably rambled on far too long I've got a tiny tiny little bit um, that I'd like to show you that's a, a quilting plan, no actual quilting to show you, and some details of what's going to be in my next little extra video. Um, if you're not sticking around for that, thank you so much and I will see you all soon. But if you are sticking around, I'm just going to lean over and grab because I've got something that I want to show you that's going to be a quilting plan. I think when I did my quilting I did a whole quilting episode a while ago when I did actually have some quilting to share. And I shared this gorgeous bundle of fabrics from Kim Porter Fabric. She sells on Instagram as well. I'll pop details down below. So it's a gorgeous bundle of fabric. These are five inches um, wide and varying lengths. And I was just gonna make um, a quilt just by sewing them all together in strips. But then I had a brainwave. I saw a quilt on Instagram. I'll pop a picture in here. It's called the Ombre Puff Quilt. It's absolutely beautiful. And I've always admired puff quilts, but had no idea how to make them. But there is a video on YouTube from Lo and Behold Stitchery, who's the designer of that pattern. Um, and it's actually quite straightforward. So I'm going to use this bundle to make my own puff quilt. 
I bought some, um, just some plain sort of white cotton to make the back of the puffs with. So that's gonna be a project to start working on because they're just basically squares. And I thought I can cope with that at this moment in time with so much going on, I can probably cope with cutting some squares and getting that started. I just need to order some polyfill stuff in and I can get cracking on that. So that's something for the future to look out for. And finally, and then I will let you all get on with your days or evenings. Um, when I was doing my video for the patchwork panel, which is upcoming, I was a little bit embarrassed by the state of my ironing board cover. It's not very old, but, and you're careful, aren't you? But you still end up with those horrible scorchy marks on your ironing board cover. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I thought I could make a new ironing board cover. There are some beautiful Laurie Holt ones out, um, but I can't really justify buying a fancy ironing board cover when I've got some lovely fabric. So I've got this beautiful Kath Kidston um, sort of decorator weight fabric, sort of like heavier than a quilting cotton. Not quite a canvas, but that's sort of in between. So I've got quite a big piece of this. And I've got some white bias binding that I just got sent from Amazon to save me having to go on the hunt for it. I think that was it, trimit.co.uk. So I'm going to have a go at making an ironing board cover. And I know it isn't really floss tube related, but it kind of, you know, if you're making, um, if you're making project bags, you'll be using your ironing board and if you're doing quilting and who doesn't want a pretty ironing board in their sewing room? So if you want to um, join me for that, I will be making a video and that'll probably be up in a couple of weeks. But I just wanted to share the fabric with you. So that really is it now. Thank you all for sticking with me today and for all the feedback that you give me on your comments um, and your subscribes and your likes. It is so appreciated. So I will leave you all to enjoy the rest of your day and look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye.